when it comes down to obtaining the offer. Um, so what I was telling you guys when I first started was, I have a student that asked me, she said, you know, I talk to a lot of people, they say they're gonna buy, I give them a bunch of free information, and then they end up buying with somebody else. The other thing that they do besides buying with somebody else is they don't do anything. So either they do something or they do nothing, or they might go do something with somebody else. Well, I explained to her, there is a buyer's contract, and a lot of people don't use the buyer's contract. CAR, the California Association of Realtors, is at the point where they're saying that we should all use buyer's contracts. Well, people don't wanna use buyer's contracts because if I don't use buyer's contracts, but you use a buyer's contract and you're talking to the buyer and you say, well, I need you to sign this contract so if I show you any of these homes, you know, I'd like to know that I'm working with you and that you understand that you know, I'm putting time and effort into this and I'd like to represent you as a buyer, okay? And you're saying to sign it, well, let's say they come to me and I say, well, I don't need a contract, let's just go look at houses. Well, they may feel more comfortable with that and they may wanna go with me. So what CAR is saying is they're saying, well, maybe we should all have to sign buyer's contracts and put them under agency. And you're not saying that I need to lock you up for six months or a year. You're saying, I just wanna lock you up for the properties that we're looking at and we're probably gonna be working up together for maybe you know 30 to 45 days. And if it doesn't work out, we won't renew it but at least get them to move forward. And at the same time you're getting them to move forward, tell them they need to get their loan approved. You know, I'm not gonna show you homes if you're not gonna have an approved loan because you may be approved for $500,000 and we're looking at houses for, we're looking at townhomes for 398 or you may be approved for 900 grand and you can go up to 1.2. So if you know what you're approved for and you know what you're shopping for, it's gonna be a better way to get the home that they want. Now the thing is, is it talks about knowing and researching, that's what we just looked at in the book, knowing and researching and knowing how to research for your clients so that they know that you're working for them. Uh, the first thing that you need to do once they have their loan pre-approved is sit down with them. You don't have to go meet them at a home, sit down with them, go to the home they live in. I don't even know any real estate agents that do what I do and I go and meet with them at their home where they live. Because if you go meet them at the home they live at and you sit down with them and you say, you know, I understand you wanna buy a home. Let's talk about what your wants and needs are. What is it that you're looking in a new home? What do you need in a new home? And what would you like in a home? And do you want a white kitchen or a brown kitchen or a gray kitchen? Do you want something that's updated? You know, what, do you, what exactly are you looking for? And you know, most of the time it's, they want a really nice kitchen and they want a really nice master bedroom and the rest of it doesn't matter. And maybe if they have a pool, that's okay too. But you gotta sit down with them. And the best way to do that, I think, is going to their home and sitting in front of a computer and say, tell me your wants and needs. Let's put the search in the parameter, the parameter searches in my computer and see if we can look at a couple homes online and see what you like. Once I have a good idea of what you like and we go out once, then I can find you a house and I know that we'll find you the best home for you. So, and, I, and that was a mistake on my part. I'm sorry, I said house. When you're working with buyers and you're working with sellers, it's not a house anymore, it's a home. And I learned that from a really great coach named Daryl Davis. And he's free, he's, on, he's free on YouTube. He does ask you, I mean, if you want to, you could join him as a coach. He is funny as heck. And he's also the one who taught me. And you know, I was in real estate for a long time before I actually wanted to work with sellers. I used to only wanna work with buyers. And sometimes buyers are very frustrating. And you guys can make a decision whether you wanna work with buyers or you wanna work with sellers or you wanna work with both. Um, it's up to you what you want to do. Maybe you want to do property management once you have your license. Who knows? But there's all kinds of things you can do once you have your license. And you need to learn all the sales techniques. And so I go to all the free classes. And sometimes I pay for classes that are like the next level. So people usually offer you a free class. And then the free class goes to kind of an expensive class. It goes on to another class. Um, I go to the free class and I pull out things that I think I can learn. And then I research them. And then I teach them to you guys. And at Real Estate Trainers, we are very affordable. I mean, that class, I got my license, what do I do? It's like $35 and it's for three hours and the stuff that I teach you guys is amazing. So um, you've got to learn how to talk to people, research what they're looking for. And you know, usually if you can go out two or three times and find them the perfect home, that's where you want to be. But right now with it being a seller's market and one house for every 50 buyers, you know, I have an agent right now. She's doing an amazing job and she is just, 
she's like the energizer bunny. She calls me all the time. Like she calls me after this class and she's like, we did it, we put another offer in. And I think she put in seven offers, seven with this one person before we finally got a house. She got a house yesterday. She got a house for this guy's home yesterday. And, um, but the sellers are asking for ridiculous things. It's almost like, it's almost like, okay, you can buy our house if you do this, this, and this. And there's things that come up that, you know, you guys need to know will come up. Like on hers, you know, she's a brand new agent. And on hers, the, the sellers countered her to have the buyer take care of the responsibility of anything that has to do with the transfer of the solar. Well, if you're a seller and you were bright enough to put a solar on your house that you leased, well, then you better figure out how you get out of the lease and you get it to the buyer. But see, right now, with it being so hard to get a home, the agents, you guys, are going to have to know everything you can do that pops up at you. And there's going to be a lot of stuff that pops up at you.